Okay guys, let's make another sim racing video. I know how much most of you guys love my shooting videos that sneak into my channel where we blow things up or we make guns really quiet. I know nearly all of you came here for sim racing, so we're going to get back to that. And this one's going to be about D-Box. D-Box is a high-end um, motion control system for primarily for home theater use. Very expensive home entertainment setups, but it's also been applied to simulation, flying and driving, and military simulation, and lots of other things. But um, it's expensive. It's mostly attainable secondhand um, for most of us mere mortals. And it works really, really well. I've been combining it with Sim Experience Rear Traction Loss. That's what this is right here. Um, not currently integrated back into my rig. I have built a new rig and RTL is coming back to it, but I've got the D-Box part done and we're going to talk about how that's implemented and how it feels so far. So I built this from the ground up. I'm going to show it to you really quick. Sorry about the mess. This place is always like this. <laughs> Anyhow, all my hardware is just laying on the floor, all the controllers and, and everything. So I'll just give you a quick overview of it and then we'll... Uh, We'll talk a little more specifically about it. The chassis is all custom designed, handmade. It's one of a kind. I'm going to build at least one more for a friend of mine. But this is a little bit different than most D-Box rigs. The actuators are very widely spaced. You can see I have one in the front center here. But you can see there are mounting points for four of them. And then in the rear, you can see there's one there, and there's one behind the seat, hidden away. And the actuators are very widely spaced, especially longitudinally, from front to back. And um, the reason that I've done this is because I do run in VR. You can see my sensor there. Right now, it's it's just double face taped to the top of my AccuForce Pro V2 steering wheel. And the reason I do that is that I lock my my head to the chassis. In simulation I can't lock my head to the horizon it doesn't work for me on bank tracks so I've mounted these actuators very widely apart to reduce the response of the D-Box actuators even though these are only one and a half inch actuators I still get in my opinion excessive response when the actuators are normally spaced which is to say pretty close together um, like most D-Box setups you see D-Box settings range from, I believe, 0 to 60 in the interface there, which we saw briefly. And even at the default of 40 out of 60, the response has always seemed way too sharp to me. It just moves your head around too much. The, the issue with these setups is when you're, when you're sitting in that seat and the cockpit's moving you around and that sensor there is capturing your head motions, if the simulation... If, if the motion subsystem is throwing your head around, there's no, nothing you can do with that sensor. You can't mount it in a way that makes it seem unnatural unless your head is, head is being moved exactly like it would be while driving a real car. So I'm, I've long been a member of the, the school of thought that, that too much motion is, is far worse than no motion. So I've moved these, these actuators uh, a long ways away in order to just tone down, to calm down the, the entire range of motion to a more useful range. And what I found out is that I've actually had to increase the pitch, which is the front to back, of course, intensity, because the actuators are, are so widely spaced front to back. I've had to increase the pitch a little bit above default. The roll has been pretty much spot on, and the heave, you know, which is of course your up and down motion, isn't really affected by distance, because that's a vertical motion. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you, even with these actuators so widely spaced, I'm going to show you what happens when I run the test routine. Now, D-Box has a test algorithm built in here, and when I push this test button, it's going to cycle the test over and over again, and it'll, 
it'll heave the cockpit up and down, it'll, it'll roll it back and forth, it'll pitch it forward and back, and then it'll do a high to low frequency vibration cycle. And that vibration cycle, you'll find out, it <laughs> gets quite noisy at low frequencies. So this is not the most neighbor-friendly thing if you live in an upstairs flat or <laughs> whatever, but you can always tune that out. Anyway, I just want you guys to, to see this test and how much the cockpit actually moves, even with the actuators this far away. So I'm going to go ahead and push this test button, and then we're going to watch the cockpit. So here we go. Just watch the sensor, how much it moves. Everything on my desk is shaking. <laughs> We'll watch it one more time and then I'll go around and I'll point the camera at it and we'll talk about it. There's a heave up down, a pitch and a roll, and then a buzz for good measure. So I'm going to walk around there now. <clears throat> Navigate this obstacle course of a workshop that used to be a master bedroom. And you can see all my controllers are just laying on the floor there. But let's watch these actuators. rather simple. We'll go ahead and stand here and watch it roll. And pitch and leave. I'll try to hold the camera nice and still so you can see it. Okay, that's becoming mildly annoying. <laughs> Anyhow, just wanted to give you a little bit of insight into into what the what the system does. Actually, let's watch that sensor one time. That sensor being next to the edge of that shelf really gives you a good perspective also. Okay, so after I do some tuning and we add RTL to this thing, I'll circle back with more info. So thanks for watching, guys.